Did you guys karaoke last night? No, I would have though. It was on my bucket list to be serenaded by Peter Brown. <laughs> Thank you. How many uh, different gears do you have on there? So I have our three motorized kits on here. So we have a Nautilus yeah. and our two-layer spinner and our oh, the heart is fantastic. with imaginary gears. And what's the name of your company? We're Steamy Cat. Nice. Thank you very much. How long did this take you to build? Oh, uh, I mean, it depends on actual build time or act planning and fabrication, all that other stuff. Yeah, so like well. a, a couple of years of taking in planning and everything, um, maybe about a month's worth of labor. It's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely lot, the planning last, definitely shows. Yeah, a lot of last minute, last minute frantic building. Can you tell us a little bit about the construction? Uh, it's aluminum, uh, laser cut, laser cut aluminum, uh, plates, uh, quarter inch, eighth inch. Uh, got stainless steel plates in there for the um, crankshaft, and then um, mild steel rods just kind of cinch it all together with cap nuts in either end. And then it um, it runs off of an Invicare Aero uh, electric wheelchair. Which has a top speed of seven miles an hour, but this is as fast as I'm getting I, it to go. I love the Strand Beast motion. It's just such a fantastic looking motion, and you've really adapted it well. It looks great. Yeah, thank you. Oh, look at that. You can even do turns by yeah, just doing half of it. They're difficult. Yeah. It's not really made for that, is it? No. No, it's not. Well, thank you for showing us. Yeah, thank you. Like, tell them what you did. Well, yeah, pretty much the base of everything was the stilt. Yeah. Which actually is made out of an old flooring joist. And then went over to crutch it, what the tallest crutches I could physically find. And then I actually went to a professional costume wire maker, or wire worker. Ooh. They make a wire cage for the inside of costumes. Well, tell them where you saw it. Well, I saw it in the movie Bad Max Fury Road. Oh, There's a yeah. two second clip of it. And I was like, yep, I'm gonna do that. That's so funny, I'm old, because the first thing I thought of was Return to Oz. Oh. <laughs> Remember the walkers who returned to us? Yeah, okay. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, yeah, you're going to be walking around Maker Fair? Yeah. You yeah. think you're going to make it all day? Uh, I go every other hour. Okay. I'll come off for an hour, then go back on for an Dylan, hour. I am impressed. That is really cool. So well. Yeah. And, you know, it's his it's his department, too, so it's like... But he's not here, and I, I, I definitely want to learn more about the Crucible. Yeah. yeah. Leather and textiles, connects electronics, jewelry, there's... Holy moly, how many pieces you guys got down there? It's a 56,000 square foot humongous building. Yeah. And every department is within 10 feet of each other. They have the projects out of all the of projects that you would do in the classes, yeah. like in Blacksmith One, you make the hook, knife, fork, and a spoon. Okay. Project. So they all start with the raw stock. It's not so much about the product, but about the operations that uh, you go through to do each project. So there's punching, there's shouldering, there's twisting, um, there's bending, there's beveling, uh, there's splitting, there's all these different operations. Upsetting. They kind of take you through all the different operations. And so you, you get would. you you make something in the end, but the real thing is that you've learned these operations. You've learned these steps. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's called green really. sand casting. Okay. So I'm using a a natural sand that's bonded with uh, bentonite clay. Picks up a lot of detail, and it's got a lot of tensile strength. And okay. and uh, basically, it can picks up the detail over the form. Yeah. We remove the pattern from the mold material uh -huh. and create a channel system that allows metal to feed into this cavity. Um, what, essentially what we're doing is we're making holes in the shape of the objects that we want. Okay. Once we have that prepared, we go to our furnace, uh, melt, the, melt the metal, right. and then pour it into the mold, allow it to cool, and then we get our... I don't understand how you could... How you could do that? Well, oh, because oh, this is actually goes because this is the part that gets poured, 
So that can be in the sand. Exactly. I actually half bury it in the sand, oh. and then the metal flows around it and it tombs it. Thank you, sir. And Boy, then well. you can flip it out of the sand, and you get yourself yeah a belt buckle. That's Just like a, that. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah. yeah. How cool. So you're kind of using its weakness to get to its strength. pattern. I turned on my lathe, inside and outside. I did a quick sand mold uh, to both test out the characteristics and also to immediately replace the wooden pattern. Okay. You know, the metal's a little more dimensionally stable, uh, you know, holds up to a little bit more abuse. So I took this, which is the bell and the gating system. So okay. this is that's what you're talking about. That's how the yeah exactly. You so you gotta have a way of metal getting in there. So okay. in this case, it's called an indirect gate. I actually poured in here, and it flowed, connected to this rim part, and then filled it up like this. Okay. So once I had this, I cut this off, and I chucked it back on the lathe and re-engineered my original pattern. So now I've got an infinitely usable master pattern. Okay. And um, and that's I, out of aluminum? This is aluminum, yeah. Okay. And now I can take this, use it infinite amount of times, and make bronzes with the same characteristics. Okay. And I could cut that off, chuck it back on the lathe, machine the inside and the outside, make a nice little walnut handle. Started off yeah. as a oak wood turning, ended up as a beautiful, very Excellent tone. Wow, thank you. Brass bell. It's actually a bronze one. We do uh, bronze. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that that's bronze is uh, an alloy, right? Yes. So that's brass and copper and tin. Tin. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Brass is copper and zinc. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking with yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. I really appreciate it. It's uh, uh, Nathan, right? Daniel. Dan. See, uh, why did I say that on camera? Uh, this is the tail. <laughs> These are the ears. And this is the back and forth. And this one's up and down. How long did it take to put all this together? Uh, about six months. Yeah. I'm building another one right now, Genevieve, that's over there. She'll be amphibious. Wow. She's in the making. And then her brother Hawk is over there too, and you can move all the levers on Hawk. Oh, that's awesome. My son's name's Hawk. That's awesome. What's, what's this one's name? <laughs> this one's Miss Tickle. One more yep. time? Miss Tickle. Miss Tickle. Yep. Okay. Or mystical if you say it really fast. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> No, actually, no. I was here last year. They had the, oh, the sure. giant world. See, there's another, there. yeah. I've never seen the Falcon, though. Is yeah. that new? That is new. Tell us about it. Um, Danny, uh, God, I want to say I watched him work on it for the month, but I'm pretty sure it was a lot. It's one of the only structures that has like a skeleton. Everything else is usually all tape, but I think they, they actually built a wire frame to hold the lighting. Did it come out? Um, and he's right inside actually doing some hands-on and teaching people how to work with tape and giving out more information. Yeah. In the, in the main floor. So that is an actual sea urchin in the top there? Yeah. And this is all glass? Glass and resin. Glass and I've resin. I've been working yeah, on your special resin. effects, okay. practical effects for like over 20 years. Okay. So basically molding and casting is a is a, is a, a specialty of mine. Yeah. Well these creations yeah. that you brought to Maker Faire are cool. mesmerizing. Yeah. Well I appreciate your time. Thank cool. you very much awesome. for talking with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you make beautiful art. Yeah, if you ever have resin casting questions, you can call me up and ask me some questions. I'm giving free advice all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have said that. I took your card. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. no, no Thank problem. You much. All right. It is right now. <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> it's okay, it still stays pretty high. I just have to get on the right side of the wind, right? Oh I see. So you so the so that's uh, you said silver in there? Silver and gold. Both. Twenty four karat gold and silver fumed onto the glass and then encased in clear. I know. Uh, what's the name of the your uh, Classes. What's the name of the company you guys are are with? Baggy. 
Bay Area Glass Institute. And you're down in San Jose, California? San Jose at the um, fair park there, the um, Sleepy Hollow. Okay, and you do classes on torch, on lamp work and on glass blowing? Glass blowing, lamp work, soft glass, <coughs> fusing. It has to do with glass. Nice. Well, somebody will have something to say. I would say stay cool today, but that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so enjoy Maker Fair. Thank you. Beep, beep. So this is the, are we calling it a car? Ice cream car? Ice cream cone car. Ice cream cone car. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get the terminology right. That is fantastic! Okay. I don't know. Look at him go! Whoa, whoa, whoa! How dare you use that kind of language? I'm sure he knows what he's doing. <laughs> that is fantastic! Ken, thank you for the demo. So that was a footage of my recent trip to Maker Faire Bay Area on the 20th and 21st of May. It's my third time down at Maker Faire and every time it is a crazy experience. I could easily show you two hours of footage and you wouldn't have seen half of it. But that's just a small glimpse into a handful of conversations that I had down at Maker Faire. I met a lot of amazing people. I saw a lot of amazing things. And it's always a fun time down there. Uh, and in fact, this year I had a last minute opportunity to be on a panel. Um, so I actually got to be on a panel with uh, Mark Roper, Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff, Laura Kampf, and we all talked about, you know, sort of what's involved in making videos on YouTube. And as soon as that video is published, I will go ahead and link to it in the end cards. Until then, enjoy a random video from my stack. I'm not used to taking my camera out of my shop, so please forgive any sound or technical issues. I did the best I could, um, but I'm not much of a vlogger. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.